Welcome back to the second video in the lesson of bars and process. In the previous video, we introduced the derivation of the finite element model of a bar using vector notation. In this, uh, less in this video, we will demonstrate how to do that using Wx maxima, which is a symbolic manipulator. Uh, the family of symbolic manipulators uh, contains many uh, packages like Maxima, uh, Math and Mathematica, Maple, uh, and MathCAD. I prefer to use uh, Maxima uh, because simply it's open source. I don't need any licensing to use it. Uh, it's uh, quite simple. I don't need uh, the extremely uh, high and sophisticated uh, algorithms or uh, facilities that can be provided by commercial packages. Uh, this uh, works extremely well with me, so that's why I use it, and I always recommend that you use open source packages whenever the functionalities are there. As a matter of fact, you'll find you'll be amazed to, to know how many, uh, how, how, how much facilities are there uh, provided for free without any need for licensing. Let's go to uh, the maxima. Here we are. Uh, in maxima, when, when we open WX maxima, we will start by defining the vector h, uh, which is defined uh, by writing its name, of course, then a column, uh, matrix, open parentheses, then open brackets, 1, comma, x. Uh, in this step, what did I do? I just defined a, a, a row vector, h, and filled it up with two elements, 1 and x. If I press Shift Enter, here is how Maxima sees uh, this vector uh, or this uh, row uh, vector. Uh, the next step, I will need to define the derivative. So I will create H subscript X uh, column. Uh, that's a differentiation, DIFF of h with respect to x with respect to is uh, given in by adding a comma then shift and here you can see that the derivative is given right away here as uh, a derivative of the first uh, element let's just play around for a second and add uh, for example x times uh, so the x to the power uh, five, 4 uh, times a, okay? This is a new vector, uh, and see how what will happen here. If you differentiate it, you will get 4ax cubed, which is exactly what you are expecting if you are differentiating this vector. Anyway, I'm just, uh, I was just trying to demonstrate this. Of course, if you need to learn more about Mathematica, uh, you can uh, watch a lot of tutorial videos on YouTube or other uh, servers. Now, I will uh, try to create the transformation matrix. So I'll say that X is equal to zero. Uh, then T1 or Tm1 is equal to H sorry, is defined as H comma numerical. Pressing this, it, if you substitute X equals zero in H, this is what you're going to get, one and zero. Uh, let's now say that X is defined as L, okay? Then uh, let's define TM2 to be equal to H, numerical there you are substituting x by l in the original h vector gives you one 
and L. Uh, now we need X back as a uh, variable, so we will use the function kill. Kill X will uh, remove any value from X. If now we write X, there you are, it is uh, the same uh, variable. It's still a variable, doesn't have any value stored in it. The following step will be uh, to create the uh, transformation matrix, uh, which will be a matrix of the two row vectors we created before, T1 and T2. So here you are, T is a matrix of uh, T1, and here we have to define that it's uh, the uh, first row. Uh, comma, uh, sorry, comma, uh, T M two again is the first uh, row, uh, and there you are. So we have now T M defined by the two row vectors. Uh, remember that we actually need to use the inverse of T M, so we will create a matrix called T one or T minus one. Uh, which will be defined as the inverse here, inverse of T M. Okay, so there you are. The inverse matrix is created. The next step will be to uh, to see, for example, what N would look like. Remember that N was defined as H multiplied by the uh, T inverse, but here when we use the multiply, when we are multiplying matrices, we use a dot, which appears as a, 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 a dot on the lower side of the uh, row we are uh, writing in. Uh, if we just press Here, shift enter, sorry. There you are. So the n uh, vector actually uh, appears now as a row vector 1 minus x over l and x over l. And this is exactly what we expected uh, when uh, we uh, started uh, the interpolation using the rules interpolation. Now comes the step of creating the uh, stiffness matrix, uh, which is defined by the integration of, uh, sorry, integrate, integrate the transpose of H X, and that requires us to multiply here by the transpose of T1, remember to add a dot here, then uh, this H transpose should be multiplied by HX as well, right? Uh, then the integration is performed from uh, on X from 0 to L. Then multiply it by transpose, okay, transpose of T, uh, sorry, not the transpose, I'm sorry, multiply it by T. Now you get 1, minus 1, minus 1, 1. Remember, we didn't multiply by the area or the modulus of elasticity. So if we just multiply here EA, you get EA over L. Uh, actually, if you remove the EA and multiply it by L here, what you will get is 1 minus 1 minus 1. Okay, so what have we done here? We actually 
used the symbolic manipulator to derive the stiffness matrix using uh, uh, the trick that we illustrated earlier by pulling out the, the inverse transformation matrix outside the integration to simplify it. And then from that, we created the stiffness matrix and multiplied the transformation at the end. Uh, uh, later, we are going to see how we can use uh, uh, maxima as well, uh, sorry, uh, use maxima again to create a higher order element by in increasing the number of nodes uh, inside the element from two to three. And uh, we'll see how this will work with us uh, to create a higher order element.